The Mets were playing the Dodgers on May 28, 2016. With flamethrower Noah Syndergaard on the mound for New York, Dodgers second baseman Chase Utley steps up to the plate in the third. On the first pitch of the at-bat, Syndergaard sends a 99 mile per hour fastball flying behind Utley, whose reaction, or should I say lack thereof, betrays what he, along with everybody else, is thinking. This was no accident. In fact, it was completely expected. As for home plate umpire Adam Hameri, he wastes no time ejecting Syndergaard, who stands on the mound with his arms outstretched in feigned bewilderment. Meanwhile, Terry Collins, the 67-year-old Met skipper, comes tearing out of the dugout in a fury, his face beat red with anger. What happens next is perhaps the most interesting ejection ever captured on film. But before we get to the full encounter, and believe me, we will, we first need to take a look at the unfortunate series of events that got us to this point in the first place. Picture this. You're wearing a great outfit, everything looks just right, and your confidence is soaring. You can walk into a room knowing you're on your A-game. And if you've been struggling with ED, Roman can give you that same feeling in the bedroom. More men experience ED than not. If this sounds like something you faced, I really recommend dealing with it with the help of today's sponsor, Roman. Roman offers a discreet process from start to finish, connecting you directly with a US licensed healthcare professional for a free telehealth consultation from the privacy of your own home. The provider will find a treatment that's right for you and prescribe effective medication if needed. Not only are Roman's prescription ED treatments safe, they're also effective and not to mention FDA approved. Erectile dysfunction treatments are used by millions of men, and they can help you, too. Roman's also offering you free two-day shipping, and if you use my link, you can get treatments starting as low as $3.20. So go to ro.co slash baseballhistorian today for 20% off your first order if prescribed. That's ro.co slash baseballhistorian for 20% off and treatments as low as $3.20. That's ro.co slash baseballhistorian. I want you to feel confident and to prioritize your health and your relationships. So if you're ready to do that for yourself, start with Roman. The 2015 season was an exciting one for Mets fans, who saw their team reach the World Series for the first time in over a decade, thanks in large part to aces like Jacob deGrom and Syndergaard, as well as one of the most successful midseason acquisitions of all time in slugger Ioannis Cespedes. The path to the Fall Classic was not an easy one, however. Having finished at the top of the National League East, the Mets were lined up to face the NL West champion Dodgers in the division series. After winning Game 1 in LA, New York found themselves up 2-1 in the bottom of the 7th in Game 2. Up to bat was Dodgers leadoff man Howie Kendrick, with runners on 1st and 3rd putting him in a position to close the gap against Big Sexy himself, Bartolo Colon. On a 1-2 offering, Kendrick knocked a sharp ground ball to second baseman Daniel Murphy, who in turn flipped it to shortstop Ruben Tejada to initiate an inning-ending double play and preserve the Mets' lead. That is, if not for Chase Utley, who took off for second with a singular goal in mind, not letting Tejada complete the throw to first. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate about whether or not the following was a dirty play. That's a discussion for a different video, not to mention one that's been rehashed by baseball pundits for over six years at this point. The important thing is this. When Utley slid, he slid hard taking out Tejada and tying the game in one fell swoop. As Tejada arrived on the infield dirt, lead runner Enrique Hernandez scored from third, nodding the game at two for LA. Tejada was carted off the field by medics and was later diagnosed with a fractured right fibula. And while nobody doubted the severity of the injury in the moment, it would become clear in the following years just how much this single play would end up changing the course of Tejada's career. Up until that moment, Ruben Tejada had been viewed by the Mets as a promising young infielder, having played in 81 games that year at short. After the injury, though, he was never quite the same. While before he had seemed poised to take over the position after the departure of franchise icon Jose Reyes, he never quite returned to form afterward. Ruben Tejada played in his last MLB game in 2019. As for Utley, he was suspended for two games for the slide, though he was able to continue playing in the rest of the NLDS while he appealed the decision. The following spring, it was announced that MLB Executive VP of Operations Joe Torre would be overturning the suspension. As part of the announcement, the league would also be instituting a new rule, requiring runners to slide before, and directly toward, the bag. Failure to do so could result in both the runner and the batter being called out. The intent of this change was, essentially, a ban on takeout slides altogether. Utley, meanwhile, would not face punishment for the play. 
at least not from the league. The Mets, on the other hand, were upset. Actually, let me rephrase that. They were out for blood. Which brings us back here. While this wasn't the first meeting between the two clubs since the playoffs, it was no coincidence that the Mets had waited until they had Noah Syndergaard on the mound to make their move. In a short time in the majors, Syndergaard had come to gain a reputation as an enforcer of sorts for New York, not afraid to send the occasional pitch flying a little too close for comfort by a batter's head. So there was no mistaking the message being sent when one of the hardest throwing pitchers in the game hurled a fastball at Utley, narrowly avoiding nailing the veteran in the ribs and plunging the city field crowd into chaos. Now, this scenario, as well as the series of ejections that followed, isn't all that unique in and of itself. For better or worse, pitchers throw intentionally at batters all the time. Said pitchers then get thrown out for throwing at batters all the time, which usually results in managers getting thrown out for throwing a fit about pitchers getting thrown out for throwing at batters all the time. No, the thing that would go on to make this particular ejection so interesting wouldn't actually come to light for the next several years. Because little known to anybody on the field, or in the dugouts, or even in the stands, was the fact that they were bearing witness to a manager ejection the likes of which had never been captured before on tape. Or, more specifically, on audio. See, a few years before, Major League Baseball had asked the umpires union for permission to begin recording audio of games using microphones attached to the officials' uniforms. As part of this agreement, the league had promised that, quote, certain types of interactions would not be made public, according to Commissioner Rob Manfred. But come June of 2018, it became clear that keeping those certain types of interactions away from the prying eyes and ears of the public would be easier said than done. Because, as it turned out, somebody, somehow, had gotten hold of first base umpire Tom Hallian's audio from the night of Terry Collins' blow-up, and had wasted no time in sharing it with an eager public. Now, it's not like baseball fans hadn't seen videos like these before, but this one was especially illuminating. Contained within this leaked video was, as SNY writer Andy Martino called it, a uniquely revealing window into the game within the game. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at the video MLB doesn't want you to see. You're done. No, I mean, you can't do that. You're not, not so right away we have something interesting. Crew Chief Tom Hallian comes rushing into frame to intercept Syndergaard, who, for his part, is playing innocent about the whole thing. The pitcher's response here isn't really that unexpected. I mean, what else is he supposed to say? Yeah, I tried to hit him, you were right to throw me out? But it's what Hallian says to this that really caught my attention. That, that ain't gonna happen. I mean, I, I, I knew you were gonna say that, but that ain't gonna happen. I mean, that's, that's the wrong time to do it, that's all. That's the wrong time to do it. With his choice of words, Hallian has, perhaps unintentionally, tipped his hand. Because you'll notice, he didn't tell Syndergaard he was wrong to try to hit Utley, just that his timing was off. Now, in the interest of fairness, one could argue that Hallian is simply trying to calm Syndergaard by agreeing with him, and that maybe he doesn't actually think Utley deserved to be beamed. Either way, Syndergaard continues to plead his case. It's not hard to do it. It's not hard to do it. It is what it is, but that's, that, that ain't gonna happen. You know, we're, our, our is in the jackpot, we don't do something there. That, I'm just telling you that. Our is in the jackpot, aside from being an instantly iconic line, is one of the most revealing aspects of this clip to me. Let's break it down piece by piece. Whose collective asses are in the jackpot? And who put them there? And just what is a jackpot in this context exactly? Even today, almost six years later, I find myself no closer to the answer to that final question. Its literal meaning aside, though, this six-word phrase effectively served to punctuate Hallian's message. The league is none too pleased with the way things have been heading, and it's up to the umps to keep things in control. Second baseman Neil Walker pushes back on this, questioning why home plate ump Adam Hameri didn't issue a warning to both sides before the game. Hallian doesn't seem to have a clear answer for it. Wait, but shouldn't there be, shouldn't there be a warning? No, no, I mean, okay, the situation of what, what happened and everything else, that's what dictates that. Okay? But there was no Neil, prior knowledge that before the game started. I mean, Neil, if Harry comes into the dugout Neil, and says, Neil, hey, if somebody gets hit, then that's... Neil, then Neil, we, everybody, everybody knows, everybody knows what, what's the situation. I want to take a second to point out the presence of this guy on the left side of your screen. This is Ty Kelly, Olympian, food truck owner, and as of this game, five days into his major league career. He's noticeably quiet during this clip, but he would go on to write an article in 2021 detailing the series of events that led him there. As he recounts the experience, Kelly mentions that he later asked Neil Walker if Syndergaard's wild pitch was in fact intentional. Walker, to paraphrase, gave Kelly some advice. 
If you're gonna do it, you better hit him. It's also Kelly who first notices something developing off-screen, something interesting enough to draw his attention away from the conversation happening on the mound. Pretty soon, Syndergaard notices something happening as well, followed in short order by the rest of the Mets infield. In fact, it's Hallian who's the last to notice Terry Collins, who is in the midst of calmly and rationally expressing his displeasure with Mary's decision. Terry, 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 Terry. Get a handle, come on, let's go. At this point, Hellion has managed to wrestle Collins away from the other umpires and toward himself. You're looking at a combined 65 years of pro baseball experience between these two, and in my humble opinion, what's about to happen serves as the platonic ideal of a manager ejection. Talk, talk to me! Tommy, that's f***ing bull you talk you to me. Then you talk to me I about know, that. Yeah, you, look, okay. you gotta give us a shot! You know what? You gotta give Harry, us a okay, shot, okay, listen to me. Let By give us a shot, we can only assume that Terry's talking about hitting Utley. See, in this moment, Collins is taking it upon himself to release an entire fan base's worth of rage onto the poor umpire. In taking Utley off the table, Hallian had suddenly turned himself into the target of the Mets' wrath. Once we dig through the mountain of expletives, though, Terry is essentially making the same point that Neil Walker had been. Why not issue a warning first, instead of ejecting Syndergaard for throwing behind the batter? And as he did with Walker, Hellion provides the umpire's perspective. Oh, why do you know the situation, Terry? Why okay. do you get a shot, Tommy? Because that doesn't, that makes Whoa. it work. Terry, that makes it work. The audio cuts out a bit at this point, presumably because Terry's yelling was so loud it blew out the microphone. Through the muffled recording, though, Collins arrives at his central point. If the league wasn't going to punish Utley, then the Mets had to do something Terry, that themselves. makes it work. I know it. The MLB did nothing to that guy. Nothing. Okay, that, that I, I can't God control that, it. Terry. I can't control that. You know as well as I do. You know where I stand on the whole situation. Now, this is interesting. Of course, like with Syndergaard, it's possible that Hallian is just saying this to calm Collins down. But I really do think that he's on the Mets' side here. He reminds Collins of his stance on the so-called situation, which tells us that Hallian isn't one to keep his opinions to himself when off the field. Despite Hallian's sympathy, Collins is still enraged. It's time to break out the big guns. No, 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 Harry, listen, I'm telling you, our is in the jackpot now. Okay? Okay? That's what I'm just telling you. There's that phrase again. In the heat of the moment, I guess it's understandable that no one stopped to ask Hallian exactly what he meant by it. The only instance I was able to find of these words appearing before was in Homicide, a made-for-TV movie from the year 2000. I take a bullet for you, and you take a bullet for me. Now that is square business, Frank. not taking a bullet for you. This is you wanting me to toss your ass in the jackpot. Okay? Okay, that's what I'm just telling you. It's possible that with this turn of phrase, Mr. Collins is referring to anyone, or as is more likely, everyone, of Chase Utley, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and Major League Baseball as a whole. Hallian, in much the same way a parent talks down a cranky toddler, asks Terry if he's got anything else he'd like to get off his chest before leading him back into the dugout. You know what? That, that, that's, you got it. You got it. You got, okay, get it. You got everything out. And scene. So, what can we take away from this video? Well, first off, credit needs to be given to Tom Hallian for his masterful handling of this situation. He successfully diffused what could have very easily turned into a spectacle of a meltdown talking the famously hot-tempered Collins down from a boiling rage to a mere simmer. Those are the kind of negotiation skills they don't teach you at Harvard Business School. And while this clip gives us only a taste of the kinds of conversations that happen behind the scenes of pro baseball, it also reveals a rougher, edgier side to the sport that isn't typically seen by the public. The bluntness with which Collins talked about wanting to hurt Utley, for example, stands in stark contrast to the relatively polished answers he gave to the press after the game. Finally, Collins and Hallian, the latter a New York native, provided a kind of entertainment in this leaked video that's rarely been seen from baseball before. When it made its way onto the internet, this clip almost immediately went viral. So it was no surprise when people started suggesting that umpires be mic'd up all the time. You know, for the good of the game. But to that end, I also understand MLB's concerns with allowing the public access to recordings like this. Because for as well as Tom Hallian handled this encounter, there's no guarantee that every on-field interaction will go so smoothly. And who's to say what'll happen the next time audio leaks of something a little more severe than Terry Collins' potty mouth? So, for as much fun as this video is, maybe it's best for everyone involved if some things remain private. But let me know what you think. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah.